choosing the best VPS that's the most optimal for sending contact forms that's both powerful and cost effective. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. My name is Ryan Borden. Let's jump into this. All right, so if you are chomping at the bit and you already know what you're doing and you just want the recommendation on which VPS to buy and how to get there, I'm going to take 60 seconds and give you that. Then I'm going to back the whole train up and we're going to go into is a VPS right for me and then walk you through each step with an explanation. So if you know what you're doing and you know what you want, you just need to know a recommendation, here it is. Otherwise, stick with me and watch the whole video and I'll give you all the information. It's all here. Go to contactformsetup.com and we're gonna just load that up. It's a list of free resources that you might find helpful, but the VPS is this section right here. You're gonna click on it and I will always have the most recommended VPS, a screenshot of how to get to it right here. We're gonna click this. I'm just going to show you, it'll land you on the homepage, Windows VPS, Ryzen, you're going to pick this $34 option right here, then you're going to click order now, once that loads up, you're going to put in a host name, it has to be unique with no spaces, so if you have several servers, each one has to be unique, I'm just going to put in a bunch of gibberish, doesn't matter, pick a password that works for you, I'm going to generate one, and just use that, you always want to choose the latest version of Windows, no matter what, and pick a location that is physically close to you. Click continue. And then we're going to put it, if it asks you for a promo code, I don't know of one. If I find one, I'll put it back here. Always and keep it updated, but the, they don't really use promo codes. And when they do, they only last for like a week. So it's really hard. Um, put in your name and address and all that jazz. And then your payment information, whatever you're paying with a credit card or PayPal or whatever, and then click agree, click complete order. And then they'll send you an email when it's done with the information. And also the information is in the control panel. All right. So now that we have the quick recommendation, let's back this back up, right? And get rid of the quick stuff. Cause we're done with that. And let's just talk about the very next step and move on from here. So let's talk for a moment. Is a VPS right for me? So there might be several reasons why you want to use a VPS. We're talking about in relation to contact forms. So like this software here, GSA website contact, this will allow you to send contact forms, make sales, generate money, all that stuff, of course. So do you want to use a VPS? Well, a, the software will run, it does run on windows. It's windows only. It will run just fine on a desktop or a laptop. The point of this video is not to convince you to buy a VPS or not. This video assumes that you are going to buy a VPS and that you have made that decision. There's not a wrong answer. It will run just fine on desktop and laptop, laptop at your home, at your office, whatever, right? Um, I have run it on desktops and laptops. I have bought machines to keep it in my house and run it on because that was cost effective at the time. Now I really only use servers just because they're always on resources. Somebody else is managing it, make sure it's always on. It always works. If there's a problem, they fix it. Um, it's dedicated resources. When I shut down my laptop, pick it up and walk away, the VPS still stays running and contact forms are still sending. And so also if you're a Mac user, you can't run the contact form software, GSA website contact natively on Mac. It's a windows only application. So this could be a good option for you to connect into a VPS, right? So lots of reasons why you might want to use a VPS again, assuming you've decided to get a VPS, then let's jump in and do it. So which one is the best one? There's like 10,000 options and uh, tons of providers and how to know which is the best. Um, it's something I've struggled with and spent a lot of time and money trying different companies and different servers and benchmarking things and testing things. And how much memory do I need? How much processor do I need? How much hard drive space do I need? You know, is this one better than that one? And, and then it's just, it's a mess, right? So there's tons of stuff. Um, the only wrong answer is whatever doesn't work. You can use various companies. You can use various VPS or servers. Lots of things will work, but I'm going to boil it down and give you my recommendation and the stuff that I use. So we can go to this website right here, contactformsetup.com. It's just a resource that I made for you for free that you can use. It has a lot of things in it. It's a very basic Google document right now. I may turn it into a website and make it pretty or whatever. It'll still always be contactformsetup.com. I will also keep this up to date. So this happens to be recording of the video in December of 2023. We're about to hit 2024. If you're watching this video in 2026, this is still gonna be relevant because I will always update it with the latest and greatest so that you can 
Just go to one spot and get all your resources. It has links to lots of things just very quickly. Scrapebox, GSA website contact, Capture Breaker, um, the VPS, which is what we're going to talk about today. It has links to where you can get proxies, redirect domain names that give you SSL, um, where you can host your uh, opt-out domain names, a template file that you can get, a master opt-out blacklist, legal compliance stuff, and even links to additional videos and resources that can be helpful, right? So jumping straight to the VPS, um, there will always be a screenshot here of whatever the latest and greatest VPS is that's going to work. But all you're going to do is you're going to click on this solid SEO VPS here, click on the link, and it pops open a new window. We'll land on the SEO, solid SEO, uh, or whatever the recommended provider is. But I've used these people for about seven years now, and they've been fantastic. And um, I actually quit all my other providers. I used to have like a bunch just for redundancy and I've gone here and it's been great. When you land here, you hit the homepage. Again, they always have new stuff coming and going. Technology is always changing. I'll always keep this up to date and you'll know again with the screenshot here, what's the best one, but we're going to go to Windows VPS here and go to the Ryzen VPS and you can see it's new. Again, most of these will work. So all of these through here, except for the ones that say GPU, you don't want those. Um, but like these two GPU ones really aren't going to be a good option. The rest of these will all work, but what is our best bang for the buck, right? Or your best bang for your quid or whatever, whatever your currency is, right? What's going to get you the best value for with the most power and the most speed and all that sort of stuff for the least amount of money. And that's going to be just this one right here, this, um, $35 option. So some people like to spend more money and that's fine. And if you want to get a VPS that allows you to do more than contact form marketing, like just say website contact, maybe you want to run straight box um, at a high level, or you want to start putting other software on there, like X evil cat monster cloud, whatever, or cat monster desktop. I mean, that's fine. You can buy more um, and you can always upgrade later too. So like if you start here and you find that you're overwhelming the VPS and maxing it out, you just put in a ticket with them, ask them to upgrade, no worries. I would not recommend, even if you want to scale contact form marketing, to get anything bigger than this. If you're only doing GSA website contact, because it's just not going to be efficient, um, you'd be better off to have two of these running GSA website contact than to go up here and have a big machine. Even companies like Google don't run on lots of giant machines. They run on massive amounts of small machines because it's more efficient. I'm not going to go into the details of why. Um, you'll have to either take my word for it or go research it. But I've been at this since 2010 and um, I spent a lot of time and money and effort uh, testing different things and researching and learning and understanding and this is what I would use right here just get this four gig plan four cores 40 gig hard drive it's sufficient and we're just gonna click order now that will take a second to, to take us to the next order page we need to configure some options here, we have to put in a host name. This literally doesn't matter. This could be anything from um, my awesome server to just, I just get into, since I have many servers, I start naming them with a number like server one, server two, whatever, right? You can name it whatever makes sense for you. It has no impact on reality. A password, put in your own password, generate a password, whatever. Just make sure that you save it. I am going to just generate a password here. And um, we're going to go back to our document here. I'm just going to stick that password right here. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to actually use this password in this server. Um, and so what OS do we choose? We always want to choose the latest one. Currently, the latest version of Windows happens to be Windows 2022. These are server versions. So server, you might hear like Windows 10, Windows 11, stuff like that. Those are desktop versions. These are server versions. So that's why it sounds different. Just pick the latest one. Whatever the latest one is, that's what you want. So we're going to pick 2022 and pick a location. There's not a wrong answer here. Um, without going into depth here, this could have an impact if you're on a slower internet connection. These days, I feel like most of the world has pretty fast internet. But if you do have a slower internet connection, you want to pick something that's physically close to you. So if you're in Europe, pick a Europe, Canada. If you're in the USA, pick USA, right? Um, I have used VPS all over the world and had zero issues. Um, even on a little slower internet, but if you had a, a really slow internet or one that feels kind of slow, then picking one physically closer to you is going to be better. Otherwise, pick whatever you like. 
Um, I am in Detroit, which is a northeastern USA city. And the physically closest one here for me is going to be these two Florida locations or probably actually Georgia. So I'm going to pick that. Again, it really has very, very little impact. And then um, my host name is invalid. Oh, yes, here's a great note. Host names cannot have a space in them. So if you want to put something, you can do an underscore or just leave it smashed together there. All right, hit continue. And um, okay, fine. I'm just going to make up whatever. I already have one called server one. Anyway, so there we go. It does have to be unique. So if you have multiple servers on one account, each one has to be unique. Okay. And let's get out of this. Now, it, if you have a promo code, enter one. If I ever find a pro promo code for them, I will put it here. Just like, so you see, I have coupon codes, discount codes here. I'll put it here. It's very rare over the years that I've ever seen a promo code. And when I have seen them, they're very short lived, like Black Friday or New Year's sale or something like that. Usually they don't use codes. So we're just gonna do review and check out or check out here, click the checkout button. If you already have an account with them, obviously you would click here and log in. If you do not have an account, you're gonna fill out this information. So pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna take you through how to put in your name and your address and stuff. I'm sure that you know that. Um, then we're gonna come down here to the method of payment. I'm not gonna take you to how through this. You can pick how you wanna pay, debit card, credit card, PayPal, Bitcoin, doesn't matter, right? So click whatever. You agree to the terms and conditions and click complete order. When you click complete order here, it is going to um, take you to, it's not gonna do anything right here because I haven't filled this stuff in, right? It's gonna give you a bunch of errors, but um, when you click complete order, it's gonna take you to the next page, which is a confirmation page. Once you have a confirmation page, you're gonna get an email and it's gonna tell you, um, thanks for the order, you get a bunch of emails. So once this is done, and it can take a while to deploy, usually they're pretty fast within 30 minutes or less, but it could take several hours if you're getting into VPS, um, especially if, you know, whatever, right? Life happens. And so give yourself a little time. They will send you an email once it's done, but you can also log into the client area, which you see up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just log in. You click on client area, it asks you for a username and password. And then when you log in, you'll see a control panel kind of looks like this. So on this particular account, I have two servers on this account um, that I have set up. And so you can click on them. You don't want to click on this host name here where it says whatever this is right here. Um, you do want to just click somewhere in the white or click the view details button out here. And once you click on it, and I'll have to blur some of this out here just because obviously I can't give away my passwords and stuff like that. It'll show you something like this. Um, but when you roll down here, you'll be able to see the primary IP address here, username and the password. So these are what you need to access remote desktop. Depending on the server you buy, um, there's different tabs here. Sometimes they split the information where the IP address is on one tab and then under additional information will be, or some other tab will be the username and password. But anyways, it's all here ultimately. Primary IP, username and password. And you need those three components to get to the actual remote desktop itself. Now I have a separate video on how to log into the remote desktop. So this is what you need. And if you're on Mac, you can just search in the app store for remote desktop. If you're on Windows, just type remote desktop and you're going to see this remote desktop connection app. And you can just click on this remote desktop icon and it's going to launch it and away you go. Again, how to, how to log in is a separate video. This video was just about how to get the VPS, which one to get most optimal and some information there. Thanks for sticking with me and I will see you in the next video.